Coke. Okay, so we're going to make some clocks. We've got, uh, I think, 16 different choices. I want you to look at these. They are varied in skill level. Some of them, the one at the back of the, uh, the packet is the hardest clock to make. The one at the front of the packet is probably the easiest clock to make. It doesn't necessarily follow that pattern all the way throughout, but I want you to look at it and uh, start thinking about which clock you want to make. Now, don't write on these because this is a class set. Because I didn't want to have to photocopy all 17 plans if you're just going to, you know, you're going to pick one of these, okay? These, I'm hoping, will be done by Christmas. So guys, uh, take a look at those. You'll notice the, uh, the very first one, wall clock number one, is uh, basically three boards that is laminated together, glued together. Okay, and it's a hexagon shape. The second one is, the second page is wall clock number two. It's just like wall clock number one, except it is an octagon shape. Now, you can change some of the sizes if you want to make a wall clock that is 12 by 12. You can do that. Okay, you'll have to probably glue some wood together. Uh, edge to edge, but you're probably going to have to glue some wood together edge to edge anyway. Um, the round clock, there's one in there that is basically turned on the lathe. It is, I had two students make it last year, and it is extremely hard to get it to come out right. Everything has to be perfect. Um, it's a round clock. And it's a whole bunch of pieces of wood glued together and then turned on the lathe, okay? Um, another design that I do not recommend is the uh, mantle clock number, or shelf clock number one. That's not a very good design. Um, I don't recommend that one, okay? My favorite clock, Students usually ask me, what's your favorite clock? My favorite clock is mantel clock number nine. It's not the hardest one. No. So mantel clock number nine is this one. Um, it's just a real traditional design clock, you know, shaped like this. This is what it looks like. Uh, Okay, it's a real traditional design. Most of these have a four and a half inch dial. And I have, the dials are, the dials are uh, made up, I mean, they're, <clears throat> they're very nice. Um, I didn't get any examples out to show you today, but um, the movement, okay, the, the clock part is a quartz battery operated movement. Um, the hands, the dial, and the uh, movement cost about 10 bucks, okay? So you can kind of estimate how much, you know, you can kind of estimate how much the clock's going to cost. Let's look, at, let's look at the front one and let's estimate the cost of that. I'll show you how to do it. So let's say we're making wall clock number one. How many board feet does that use if you make it nine by nine? How many board feet does it say? It says up the top there. 1.87. Okay. So approximately two board feet, right? Okay. And let's say an average cost of lumber, hardwood lumber, an average cost is probably about four bucks a board foot. Okay. So, how much would the wood cost for that one, approximately? Eight bucks. Eight bucks. 
Okay, so the wood cost approximately for that one is about eight dollars. And then what did I say? All of the hardware and the uh, quartz movement costs with the dial and the hands, ten dollars. So if we add that up, that clock's going to cost you about eighteen dollars to make. Okay. Okay. So you guys can get an idea of how much it's going to cost. Speaking of costs, you guys that have not paid for your uh, celatons need to get that paid, you know, here pretty, like today. <laughs> today or Wednesday, so two bucks. Okay, so if you haven't paid that, bring that uh, on Wednesday. All right? Questions? Um, I've got, I guess you can, you know, work on getting your solid times done today. Um, if you want to, you know, spend some time trying to pick out which clock you want to make, you can do that today. Um, we can, we also need to fill out on your solid times, if you haven't done it yet, you got to fill out this project planning sheet. And... Guys, on the back of this, that writing needs to be done in sentence form. Those need to be sentences. So on the back, it's got a reflection sheet that says, describe the skills and concepts that we learned for this project. You need to write three sentences there, explaining three skills. Okay? What skills, concepts, new and previously learned, did you use to create this particular project? Again, write three sentences. Uh, all right, make sure you do that. I'm kind of keeping these. These are writing samples. We're told this year we have to keep those. And I have to keep a later writing skill, and we're looking for improvement. Okay? So, you know, do, but you do need to write sentences on there and, and take a little bit of time and do a good job of it. I am giving you a grade on this sheet. Remember I told you that? This sheet is 25 points. All right, your salad times are worth 200 points. So, questions? No questions? No. Anyone want, want to know what the stock market's going to be doing today? No. Going down. Going down? Maybe. I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead. Grab your glasses. Go to work. So, uh, Mark Johnson, Blake Charles.